Yo guys, sorry, you already know that today we are back to play some more Raging Loop. On the last time, we found ourselves a place to stay. Uh, we also put a bunch of nails into the tires of the van of the reporter and photographer, um, trying to see if we can get them to survive, which is an angle that I was not expecting. And we are going to see how that works, because keeping more humans alive is, you know, good for us. So we'll see what happens. Uh, what? You gotta be kidding me. Second sign was completely perplexed. I know this is troubling. I still couldn't read his expression, but I could totally sympathize with someone being basically stranded in a place like this. How unfortunate. They weren't suspicious of me, so I just acted like an innocent, sympathetic bystander. Oh, the heartache. Uh, we were supposed to head back tonight. What are we going to do? Do you have any plans? Uh, I'm fine, but what about you? Uh, my daughter's birthday is close. Oh, uh, Nami-chan. Oh, the heartache. I had no idea he had a daughter, or is married for that matter. The fact that it, uh, come as a, it came as a surprise just made my pain worse. But I shouldn't feel guilty about this. If I just ignore them, they'd have been torn apart by a monster. Oh my. Uh, what do we do? Yasumizu has no cards in the first place. It's not someone might have something useful. Uh, those words made me twitch. <laughs> uh, these tires are special, uh, so that would be difficult. Uh, we do have a single spare, but... Uh, let's contact road service. Or maybe, on. maybe we use the phone? Yes, of course. Right this way. They all return to the dining hall. I have a bad feeling about this. I was left alone with a peculiar duo. Then we were joined by a muscly silhouette who'd come from the fields. Hey, what's up, Takemi? What are you doing, Obachan, Umatsu, and who are you? This is Haruaki uh, Fusashi-sama. She went out of her way to in introduce me, though she still couldn't leave off the sama. Uh, I'm moving here. I hope we get along. Oh, you're the guy, huh? I'm Takemi Muro. Pleasure. You don't look like you're from Kam Fujiyoshi. An outsider, then? That's rare. Sorry you ended up here. They really had to do something about that habit of showing sympathy for anyone who came here. Uh, yes, I came here from the city. I'm sorry I'm so suspicious and flashy. I'll read down my hair. All right. That'd be good. Well, she hates that sort of thing. Uh, I don't really care, though. I care more about something else. As in, if you're if you're useful in the field. Unlike Kam Fujiyoshi, Yasumizu doesn't abandon his people. But we don't have room for those who can't earn their keep. While mentioning Kam Fujiyoshi, uh, he glanced at Uematsu-san. Uh, well, you look like you have the build for it. You can start by mowing the grass around the upper fields. Uh, but I was told to work in the dining hall. What? You're working with Kaori-san? <laughs> Yo, he mad, mad. Crap, I messed up. Takumi, uh, you're a fine man. Just tell her how you feel. What do you mean? I'm not thinking anything about that outrageous. But uh, she supports two grown sons and feeds everyone with her frail arms. I'm going to kill any guy that uh, tries to take advantage of her. That's plenty outrageous. Uh, hey, what did you get her to take you? Spill it. Took a lot of effort to keep myself from lying and fueling the fire. <laughs> oh, uh, Higuchi-san from Kam Fujiyoshi, right? Uh, he sent me to work with her. Takumi, she became apathetic. Oh, I guess that's fine then. <laughs> wow, jumping to conclusions, aren't we? Uh, I'll try to become able to work outside, too. That's great and all, but for now, just watch. Uh, if we made you do uh, too much, uh, they may get on our cases about it. Huh? They care about what kind of work people do here? Uh, they don't. They just want to be sure we listen to them. So, uh, what are you all up to? Uh, where's Kairi-san? Uh, the journalist's car broke, so she went to make a call. Huh? That's pretty bad. Can they leave? Uh, it's, best to the same, uh, it's best to assume they won't have it fixed today. Hmm. Awful. This is getting nowhere. Do you have any open rooms? Uh, that house was the only one I could give. Um, well, Master Sama, you gave, uh, Kensen's house to him? Yes, houses die if people do not live in them. Uh, take care of that house, will you? A good person used to live there. Of course. Don't you dare use it as a place where you take advantage of Uomatsu Sama. That cannot happen to her, understand? Ho? Uh, what? You two are like that? Uh, it's a complete misunderstanding, but it seems to keep being taken as fact. I'd appreciate, uh, if it wasn't. We went off on a tangent. What do we do? I'd have liked it if the, if I, the newbie, didn't have to be the one making this conversation progress. Hmm, I really don't think it's good if house out of staying Yasumizu. Neither side would like it. Uh, Bachan, you got any free houses? Uh, the one I gave Megachan was the last one. The rest had holes or didn't have walls. You can't even shelter in those. Uh, liar, there was a room in the dorm. Um, oh? Uh, you sh sure slept for long. Uh, go help out the old man. Oh, sorry, I got in the habit of sleeping in while I was away. By the way, uh, Tai Bachan, uh, there's one free room in the dorm. Chichad, you know the place was built by... Yoshimitsu-san, he worked hard negotiating with the four families to get it built. He said he wanted uh, for at least the children here to live in uh, nice places closer to Kamfujiyoshi. That's why he had the concrete stairs built on the hill and... Uh, aha, she started talking about the past again. Well, uh, Fusaishi, you see what kind of place Yasumizu is? I already knew. Anyway, uh, I hope they can fix the car. This was bad. Hmm. Getting them to stay is probably not going to work. But we haven't been given a choice, so it's not like there's another option we can go back to and, like, try differently, at least not from this point. Because the next best thing would be to try and get them to leave. Um, but I don't know if that would be effective. 
Just as expected, the road service would take a long time to get here. They'd be here sometime in the middle of the night if they tried to come right away. The mountain road was even more dangerous at night, so they agreed on the service coming in the early morning, which led us back to the talks about where they'd stay. Though by the time that discussion was over, Yamawaki-san, who was done talking, had left. She really gave us outsiders a cold shoulder, huh? Takumi-san uh, tried suggesting they stay in their van, and I was surprised to hear they were receptive to the idea. Them being a man and woman was one thing, but I was more concerned if that van had enough space for someone that huge and another person to lie down. Still, it looked like they were about to agree to just leave it at that, but that was no good. They wouldn't survive the night like that. Hmm. So far, the only people I hadn't met were the students who were in school, uh, Kanzo Makishima-san, uh, who was out hunting since morning, and the old man who cried wolf. Since I'd met just about everyone, I chose to take my leave. It wouldn't have been natural if I tried to talk uh, them out of that. I had to get places for them, but my only option was one I didn't have much faith in. Anyway, doorbell. Oh, you're the new one. What do you want? Uh, there's a problem that I think only a village head can solve. Uh, while I don't mind the sentiment, uh, you can knock off the awkward flattery. Uh, why not act more like yourself? With my politeness that insincere. Uh, sorry. Now, about what I came here for. Hmm? Is it true that the mists are coming soon? How would... Does anybody know that? The effect my words had on Kia no Skeishi was impressive. He tried to act calm, but his uh, watering eyes made it clear he wasn't. What? Who told you about that? Who mentioned that superstition to you uh, right when you just got here? Um, Umatsu-san. He fell silent. The guy was easy to read. Uh, someone else told me about the mists themselves, though. Uh, the one who sent me here was Shoji Huguchi-san. Oh, Shoji? He's one year younger than me. What did he say? I might have misheard it, but he said there might be mist soon. There was no truth to my words, but they would become true when the mist came. But Uematsu-san said there's something that must be done if the mist come. There are people who are stuck here because their van has flat tires. I'm wondering what they should do. Oh, that's news to me. How troublesome. Uh, it is. What do you think? Uh, early summer mist here in Yasumizu happen only every decade or two. Decade or two? Okay. Well, it wouldn't be impossible for them to appear now, but I don't think I saw all the signs of it happening anytime soon. Wait, but what about Mako reappearing from Serenaga? Did that not- was that not the thing that threw off some red flags? Or was my appearance from the Serenaga the one that really set it off? Hmm. I see. Uh, by the way, what's so dangerous about it? Everyone seems so tense. When the mists come to Yasumizu, someone always dies. Was that an okay thing to say? Oh, don't misunderstand. The mists uh, you get here are far more dense than any you know. I hear they make you as good as blind. I knew that, but yeah, I couldn't have imagined mists that dense unless I saw them for myself. That's why the people here were taught to stay indoors, um, whenever that happened. But you have fools who still go outside and fall to their deaths or something. I see. Uh, did you see the destroyed construction site not far from here? Uh, that was a project run by my family, but it ended with a mist uh, led to the on-site deaths. Seriously, uh, they could have pulled out sooner, but the overseer was too strict. I felt stupid for ever considering crazy theories about some Serenaga illness. That mist was dangerous in and of itself, and that made for a good official reason to stay indoors when it came. He seemed to believe the official reason and thought it wouldn't kill him. If he actually knew about the true dangers lurking in the mist, he'd do everything he could to leave Yasumizu. He was from a head family, but he didn't seem to know all the secrets. She, on the other hand, must have known something. I'd love to find out more, but... Hmm, hold on. Uh, he just told me something weird. The mist led to on-site deaths? Did you see the aftermath of the landslide uphill? It's been like that ever since the Nosato got to work on that place eight years ago, and it collapsed. They were too freaked out to even clean it up. I ended up digging out the workers' corpses and burying them. I was told that Takumi-san buried the bodies. But if it happened in the mist during a feast of the Yomi Purge, didn't that mean he should have been present during the feast? Hmm... I'm not sure, from what I can tell. Last time, the mist scared the people here and drove them to panic. Kanzo Makishimashi hadn't reacted like that. While the old wolf guy had said that wolves were coming, it was likely they'd experienced the feast before. But I didn't know what had happened to the other people, or what I'd even do with that information. One thing I could say was that the survivors either killed or silently approved of killing people. Chemi could be one of them, and so could the students. Even if I couldn't connect with all of the dots, it was entirely possible. I had to keep myself together. I had many things to think about later, but for now I had a goal to complete. Uh, and yet, the people at the main house... Uh, say, no such son. Hmm? You said that construction site of, uh, is yours, right? Right, what of it? Is that prefab usable? For what? I just thought that'd be a better place for the troubled outsiders to stay at. Hmm? I have to think for a moment. Kino's Kishi returned inside. I'd expect him to say something like, why would I, a village head, silly my hands with Yasumisu's problems or something. Uh, so this came as a surprise. Kinosuke Shi came back shortly. This should be it. The previous head of the family uh, brought it here after the incident, and just as I expected, it was in the key box. Thank you very much. Wait, I didn't say I'd give it to you. In fact, why would I, a village head, silly my hands with Yasumisu's problems? And there it was. You have a point, I'm sorry. I'm joking. I didn't say I wouldn't give it either. Wow, what a pain in the ass. Uh, unlike Moro or Serizawa, 
You seem to know how to behave around the heads. Uh, Yasumizu inhabitant or not, I value such people. We village heads are responsible for maintaining order in Fujiyoshi. Thank you very much. Oh, so he believed in the concept of noblest oblige. Shame he didn't have the ability for it. Oh, first I had to check if the place was even usable. Uh, the equipment and materials were all gone. The only thing of note here was the sink on the wall. The floor was cold and a bit sandy, but with a bit of cleaning and a futon, it could be a decent living space. There was no running water, but if we placed a water bucket here, whoever was living here could easily wash themselves. Oh, baby. Okay, so there's going to be something here once we get keys 3 and 20. There's that key 20 again, which is very, very interesting. If we look at the keys that we have now okay so three is like right in this area and then if we look at the um the the chart i think key 20 is somewhere over on this timeline oh wait did i just pass it yeah i think i i think i just pass it uh i think it was in in two right yeah yeah right here um so that's key 20 but then we're we need 20 and three so are we going to be going back and forth between the loops because once we get to key 20 i imagine we would come over here Unless we get key three first? Interesting. Okay, who knows? Either way, uh, we have to return to the dining hall, I guess. But I feel like something bad is going to happen as a result now. I now had one empty living space. Getting the other, the dorm room, was even harder. I didn't even think I could force it at this stage. However, it was still a better option than just wandering around looking for alternatives that may not even exist. This would be a real waste of time if it didn't end up saving them. <clears throat> I wasn't about to stop trying, though. It was still just a bit afternoon. Honestly, I was a bit hungry. But there was a strange, powerful reek coming from the dining hall. I had no idea what could have caused this. Was it a toilet? No, it was something... It was more along the lines of rot, animal rot at that. Uh, the old man probably just came back from hunting. Did someone already die? My memories made me forget the situation was still peaceful when I dashed. Suddenly, a dense wall rose up before me. Oh, what? I was pushed away. Ah! I spaced out for a moment, but then I realized I bumped into the local hunter, Akanzu Makashimichi. Uh, you're the one, eh? This was the first time I'd seen him hold his gun in his hands. But I was even more troubled by his face. I was pretty sure I'd seen the old lady Tai wear something similar the first time. Uh, all that happened uh, later made me forget about it, but man, was it weird. Sorry, there was a weird smell, so I was wondering if everything is okay. Uh, Shishinari. Huh? That's Shishinari boiling. They're feeding the journalists. Oh yeah, Hisaki's always here to eat something strange. Uh, be careful, boy. Alright, um, may I have your name? Uh, Makashima. And he left. The bundle he had in his left hand told me that uh, he had only been here to get his lunch. He was as tough as I remembered. That chest made it hard to believe how old he was. What a hunk of a man. <laughs> that thought maybe seemed like some love struck teen girl. Anyway, that cleared things up. This one was caused by cooking. I gathered my resolve and went inside. Yeah, I called that. It's too early for someone to just be randomly dying. I don't think anyone's going to die until tonight. Or, yeah, basically. Oh, where were you? I had things for you to do. Uh, Kairi-san glared at me a bit. Crap, uh, I'd have to make it up for the points I'd lost. Uh, I'm sorry, I had business with nosata san business with him. Did Higuchi tell you to give him a message? No, mommy san Hashimoto-san, can I have a moment? Besides the one in charge here, uh, in that sleepy head, uh, you also had the journalists who were busy taking photos and jotting down notes. I was impressed by their professionalism, being able to get back to work right after the problem was solved, although it actually wasn't. Sorry to bother you while you're working. Uh, Nosato-san said that it's not a good, uh, that it's not good to spend a night in the van and gave me the key to the prefab. Oh? What? That block, I mean, Nosato-san said that? Well, it was nice to find out how she usually called him. Apparently, there's one more room, too, so why don't you ask if they can open that so you can spend the night under a roof? Mm, I appreciate the sentiment, uh, but I don't want to force anyone to give me a room. Of course you didn't. That was a normal thing to think. Uh, Kairi-san, we really should open the dorm. Losing to Nosato-san would bring shame to Yasumizu. Hmm, I won't say anything about that, but yes, uh, even if there aren't any bad people here, I don't feel good about letting a young lady sleep in a car. Uh, Kairi-san, can we have lunch? And the most important person around joined the scene. What? And the Sato-san gave me a key. Uh, it's for the prefab, but still, uh, now one of them can rest with a roof over their heads. Oh, that's... I wasn't explicit about it, but she instantly understood what I was getting at. But that place is... I don't mind having a new neighbor. Uh, by the way, what kind of place is the dorm anyway? Uh, that is a place for the children who will soon leave Yasumizu. To live in Yasumizu means to be a part of Yasumizu for the rest of your life, but that doesn't apply to the children. Uh, that makes it uh, the only special place here, and the people of Kamfujiyoshi silently agree. Oh, so this was just another way Kamfu Fujiyoshi exerted power over Yasumizu. I could understand why they didn't want to mess with it. Uh, but I knew from experience that it wasn't an insurmountable obstacle. They'd open it up for emergency, but tomorrow would be too late. And I didn't really have a good way to convince them that this was indeed an emergency. Uh, it's fine. I'm used to sleeping in a car. 
Uh, you can use a prefab, Hashimoto-san. Uh, that car is more than enough uh, for just me. Not to mention, uh, you're the one doing all the driving. Uh, shouldn't it be the other way around? Uh, we're talking about the prefab uphill, aren't we? I'm not sure I want to let a woman sleep there. As we pondered... Uh, excuse me. Hashimoto-san actually spoke up and walked to Tyson. Can I help you? If you have a proper room, could you please open it up for her? She's a tough lady who can handle work in this field, but she's still uh, unmarried. As her partner, I don't want her to do anything. She shouldn't have to. Uh, I will thank you in whatever way I can, so please... He bowed. His large body bent in two, but Tyson still had to look up at him. I understand, but... Whoa, Tyson was on the verge of giving in. Uh, hey, Fuseishi, so you came back, huh? Uh, why were you out when Kari-san was making food? You've got some nerve leaving uh, when she needs your help. Oh, talk to me, Nishan. Perfect timing. Huh, what? Perfect timing, indeed. He was the best person to convince Tyson. And in the end, she agreed. The word unmarried meant a lot to her, apparently. She seemed to become more considerate of Mamiya-san after that. Uh, one of the reasons for this victory was the pressure emitted by Hashimoto-san's massive presence, and the other was the fact he presented a reason that resonated with her. And then Takumi-san joined the scene and gave it the final push. Hmm. This wasn't exclusive to Yasumizu, but finding a compromise in a community without common interest was really difficult. It was especially hard when you couldn't give proper reasons for your words. They started to suspect I was a slacker, but I said that I was called by Nisanta-san, and though it surprised them, they believed me. As a result, I had to make up a story about uh, how he was shy but actually considerate of, every of everyone, which was why he called me. After all, I couldn't let them think I decided this by myself. Fair enough. After we got the key from Tyson, the two journalists and I left the dining hall to prepare our living spaces. The dorm room was clean to begin with. There was gas, water, and a futon, exactly like I remembered it. The house I'd be staying at was clean too. All I had to do was get a futon from the dining hall and fill the pail with water. The prefab, though, took a while to clean. Takumi-san uh, brought the cleaner pieces of tata uh, tata tatami? Yeah, tatami. Wow. Uh, from the abandoned shacks here, which made it a relatively livable space. Uh, well, uh, if we're staying here, we might as well experience the local daily life. Shame we won't be able to make an, art of it, uh, an article out of it. They seem to be satisfied with that reason. Uh, I hope we could work in a safer place next time. Uh, sorry, most of my gigs are like this, aren't they? Oh, this is better for me. I have insurance, and uh, it's safer than a war zone. He'd been in such places? He did more legwork than his looks would have you believe. Uh, but you are a woman, Kyu-chan. Uh, I keep telling you not to mention that. There are no genders while we're working. Uh, sadly, dangerous places are uh, riskier for women than men. Well, you know, I can't get any better jobs, uh, or a man. It's rough, huh? The relationship was, ju was just that of good business partners. Mami-san was a passionate journalist, while Hashimoto-san was a senior who was worried about her and helped her out. There was a decent balance here. That's unexpected. You're good-looking, so I figured you'd be more popular. Flattery won't get you anywhere. Oh, believe me, if I was less pathetic, I'd have gone for you without hesitation. Ah, what an honor. How old are you, by the way? 24. Hmm, and I'm about to enter my 30s. I feel really bad. Oh, come on. Unmarried 30-year-olds weren't rare in this day and age, though I preferred women who were a bit more bothersome. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, also, yes, as an unmarried person in, in, in his 30s. Uh, yep. I'm not rare. I'm not rare. Don't be rude about it. Uh, what's this tub? Ah, it's to clean your body. But we'll only be here for a day. I was told it's a custom here. Hmm? Can you tell us more? Alright, this is a good chance to share info with them. Yes, tell them that they're gonna die. <laughs> Presenting it as info I'd heard from Uematsu-san and Kinoskishi, I told them about what uh, had to be done when the mist came. I couldn't sound too knowledgeable, though, since I was a newbie here, but I was able to imply that there was a supernatural danger involved. Uh, Mamiya-san was extremely intrigued and quickly asked for extra info, like the stuff about the forehead families. I did my best to mention only what I found out this time around, but I couldn't help worrying that I would say too much. Hmm, interesting. So, uh, that's so Shinto-like, though. I wonder how it was passed on. Uh, strange Tori families with guardians to their names, accustomed to cleanse only when the mist came. They don't seem too hospitable to guess, though. Uh, what a mystery. How did such unique customs survive in such a remote farming village? Was it even more peculiar back in the day? Uh, it really does look like this is your calling, Kyu-chan. Oh, apologies. Anyway, uh, we have places to sleep in and, and know what to do if the mist comes. Let's get back to work. Uh, you're satisfied with the dorm, right? Uh, then I'll use this place. Ah, uh, if you want, uh, you can use the cabin downhill. This prefab is pretty cramped. Uh, don't worry. I can sleep anywhere. Uh, and you're going to live here, aren't you? You should get used to your new home as quickly as possible. Mm, he had a point. Also, I'd borrow the place from Umatsu-san. I didn't have the right, uh, to... I didn't have the right ought let anyone, uh, just anyone use it. Somebody didn't spell check that properly. It's okay. I forgive you. Oh. Interesting. And now, Key 16, I assume, is going to be like, no, actually, we need to stay in this place. Ooh, are we in danger staying at the at the the place that Uematsu gave us? 
Interesting. Okay, okay. There are a lot of branching paths. All right, sorry about that. I mean, I say a lot of branching paths, but, like, I mean, look at look at what we are, are looking at now. Between here, we have decide arrangements. We have all set. Um, okay, we did. that. Those are the only two right now. But still, it's like, that's two keys to lead to somewhere else. And then there's this one for different arrangements. I'm still keeping the one on the other time loop in mind. This this web is starting to really grow. Uh, don't be, we should be thanking you. You did a lot for us, didn't you? Huh? That Nasato person didn't seem like the considerate type, so I can only guess that you got him to help. Oh, you give me too much credit. Uh, this girl tends to push herself too hard. Thank you for caring for her, where I couldn't. Hey, you're only a dozen years older than me. Don't act like my dad. Haha, <laughs> there was something about him that bothered me. Really? Anyway, with that done, I figured I'd spend my re remaining time trying to rub elbows with the rest of Yasumizu. Though I already had a job here, I had to make up for not helping uh, out of the dining hall before noon, but... Uh, you can't work on an empty stomach. Oh, alright. Creepy music, and I feel like uh, she's going to feed me food, and well, there's still some fishy stuff about the food. So... I think this is a good time to actually end off. Uh, I thought we were just going to go around and like meet people and do all that sort of stuff, but I feel like this might become more serious and lengthy. So I'm actually going to end it off here, and then on the next time, we're going to see if we can get around to eating the food. Or maybe we're going to try to eat the food. Maybe it'll kill us, and then that'll get us a key. Uh, either way, we will figure out what we're going to do in the future. Yeah, this is like the sound of someone dying. Isn't this the music that plays when someone dies? Anyway, uh, or like when you find a body. That's very, very creepy. Um, but we'll see if we can make it to and through the first night next time. Because I'm really interested to see if this is an exact repeat of the time loop or if there are going to be some changes. And uh, I'm interested to see what those changes are and how they affect everything. So hopefully you are enjoying and looking forward to more. So let me know. But I'll see you on the next time. So until then, peace out.